the initial experiment, as I, as I mentioned uh, before, was to show that some sequence of artificial RNA molecules, some sequence of nucleotides in an artificial RNA molecule would drive the incorporation of a specific amino acid, which is a building block of a protein, into proteins, incorporate them into proteins. And uh, what was not clear was how long the, these code words were, namely how many nucleotides or letters was really necessary to encode an amino acid. If I wanted to specify leucine, which is an amino acid, how many nucleotides, those are the four bases that go into making DNA, and they are transcribed into RNA, which is the mobile form of uh, information flow from a gene. And that RNA, or messenger RNA as it's called, is then read on a template to direct the synthesis of a protein. What's the difference between transfer RNA and messenger RNA? There's a transfer RNA is an RNA molecule to which an amino acid becomes attached, let's say just at one end, and at the other end it encodes an anticodon. In other words, it encodes the mirror image of a codon or a code word that specifies that amino acid. So if the code word for uh, phenylalanine is UUU, the anti-code word, which is in the transfer RNA, is AAA. A and U are complementary nucleotides, and they fit together uh, in accordance with, base, with appropriate base pairing as it's used in the genetic code. So the transfer RNA is a little adapter molecule that holds the amino acid and encodes its anticodon that gets recognized by the codon. And the codon is in the messenger RNA. That's the, the blueprint, basically, that establishes which amino acids are incorporated into proteins. And what is the message from DNA that is being carried to the amino acid? Well, the message that is carried, the information that is carried, is which amino acids to use at which position in the protein. So it will establish the beginning. The genetic message will tell you, begin here at a in specific initiator codon. And then it will encode a series of codons, each of which specifies an amino acid. Let's say the code word for leucine, phenylalanine, aspartic acid, glutamic lysine and so forth and then each of those is incorporated into the protein one after another read from the message and then finally the message will also encode a code word that says stop finish and release the protein so it's really a a, a very detailed instruction book accounting for every message will account for a different protein and thus they'll encounter the, uh, encode the entire repertoire of, uh, of proteins that make up an organism. So the architecture is determined by the DNA. The and DNA encodes the genetic information. Each and every gene is encoded in DNA. The way they're encoded is a little complex, but that's exactly right. You can look at it uh, as if it were a series of blueprints, really. Not only does the DNA carry the information that encodes every protein, but it carries the information uh, regarding how that information is read out or released. The regulation of genetic information. There's a specific order to which these proteins are synthesized, and they respond to the environment. So you have to have mechanisms encoded in, in, encoded in the DNA, which, which not only give you the structural information, but which also give you the information about when this should be read, in what order, what's to precede it, what's to follow it, how much of this particular gene product is to be made, and when it is to be made, and when it is to be stopped.